Hello friends and uh, welcome back and let's start uh, today will be our second session of uh, Azure weekend class. So yesterday right uh, we have covered the pretty basics actually uh, about the cloud as well as the Azure and how to create the account. I know uh, a few guys I'm yet to give the uh, access. I'm going to give it to you after this class. So don't worry. Uh, now uh, today's session right we're going to establish our base environment as well as deploy some vnets as well as machines and in multiple ways actually normally in azure right you can manage your uh, aws sorry, azure infrastructure with through the portal as well as through the command line as well as uh, through the PowerShell. I mean, if you say command line, you have a bash shell as well as a PowerShell. And as well as you can also use uh, like SDK software development kits like uh, uh, Python JDK or uh, uh, Java JDK and deploy things. But we're not going to touch that one. That is only for our, uh, developers actually. Now, we can actually do the things in three different ways here. One is to do the things in the portal like whatever the infrastructure we're going to create we're going to create in portal second thing is we're going to use a powershell third one is we're going to use the azure cli now uh, every time you, know, you need to practice something right you need to build up the infrastructure basically now for that one and creating uh, doing things from the portal uh, is a tough job guys so what you need to do is you need to habituate towards the using the command line now first i'm going to show you how to do uh, using the gui portal and later what we're going to do is we're going to use a script to deploy everything now one of the good thing in uh, azure which is not available in aws but available in uh, google is it's called a cloud shell so what i'm going to do is either you can shell.azure.com you can also do it from here as well you can go to here and you can click on this so it will open uh, the cloud shell uh, and if you click on this plus mark right so it will open a new window and open the cloud shell either way is fine or you can directly go to shell.azure.com now at the back end uh, <clears throat> what exactly is happening is uh, it is actually creating a virtual machine we don't know that it won't show it won't show but actually what will happen if i go back to a storage accounts here if i go to storage accounts now uh, here it is going to use this account actually so if you see the resource group it is showing cloud shell storage account right so it creates a storage account it is similar to the aws s3 or like a google drive actually and it will put all the files there so this shell uh, it, it will it will work as a bash shell guy that means if you have if you know the linux scripting it works like this for example or something like this i say like uh, let me show it to you so if i run a test script actually We run down something like this okay so it will it will it will work as a <clears throat> shell script basically if you see just keep on going the loop so what i'm trying to say is you can run uh, your shell scripts here so similarly in this one you will get something like this az actually az cli az uh, what i'll say like uh, uh, vm list for example if i type something like this az vm list so what it is going to do is it's going to get me what is the, what is the vm running and you can also do the a grip things actually linux uh, shell scripting grip thing something like if i give the name here so it will say the name now this 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 is actually you can be used if you're familiar with the linux right you can actually use the bash shell do a lot of things and later we're going to deploy our whole or the whole infrastructure uh, daily when you do the practice right using this one now you can ask me how about the powershell yes powershell is also fine now when i go to the management point of view is ease of usage right because i do in powershell as well as i do in uh, shell scripting as well guys so um what will happen is if you want to use the powershell right you need to put some extra effort powershell need to be used if you want to do like uh, extreme scripting like if you want to have a lot of parameters inputs everything a, a wide range of modules and everything and do the scripting uh, then PowerShell is very good for you. If you are actually doing a base management, then what will happen is you really don't need to use the PowerShell. Again, it depends upon person's perspective, whichever you are comfortable. So what I can do is I'll say 
get uh, hyphen az i can use something like this az resource <coughs> resource group so what it will do it will it will check it out and get me uh, what are the resource groups so as well as uh, az get az vm iphone resource group name i can say like hub rg it will check it out and get me the vm details basically you can further do that one actually so we have uh, we have the powershell scripting class as well at the last uh, before the zoo demo so we're going to talk about that but it, it depends upon you guys but if you really don't want to use the scripting at all or i'll go back to the bash if you want to do everything to the portal yes i'm fine by that one but let me tell you uh as i said nobody in real time does the things from the uh, from the gui actually everybody is expected to if you have some sort of a scripting knowledge now if you if you learn any one scripting like a uh, powershell or shell scripting the it is the syntax which changes but at the logic remains the same the the, the way it operates uh, the, the conditions as well as the loops and everything it operates the same so if you are familiar with one uh, scripting language the other will be very easy because because the concept is very much same now uh, now we already have the subscription if i go here let's go to the subscriptions okay now if you if you remember we have actually three subscriptions because i'm doing some testing at the azure active directory so what will happen if you remember yesterday uh, uh, i said like whenever you create an account you will be created with a tenant id you should start using that one okay so one more thing what you can do is if you sometimes what will happen is imagine you are developing an application or, or some product actually in this account and they said that i really don't want to use the azure active directory uh, given by that i want to have a separate tenant id so one way of i mean separate i mean for testing and everything separate a directory i want to use it what we can do is we can create a new email address and register it or the other way uh, what we can do is we can go to azure active directory here i'm going to explain this when you go to azure active directory but I just want to tell you what happened to the other two uh, subscriptions actually if you go here you have an option to create a directory guys if we create a directory you can give the details here if you get details and everything it will it will create you a new tenant actually so right now if you see this is my tenant id right what i did was i have created a new directory actually yesterday i was testing something so if i go to switch directory see the other directory which i have created is maverick trainings which is uh, maverick trainings one dot on microsoft.com like this you can also create an additional tenant but again you don't have any subscriptions by default again you need to do the same subscriptions actually but this is basically see nothing is there available i moved back so i moved to this one uh, uh, like testing and development and azure pass to here and i moved back again to the my the original subscriber original tenant account so if you go to azure active directory here you will see a completely different see uh, tenant id it is actually starting with 3a1 guys okay and uh, this is a maverick trainings so whatever the users create in this directory will be here only okay so it's, it has nothing to do with the uh, my original directory so again it, it, it is rare people will actually create this type of uh, tenants and start using it they normally create subscriptions only just in, in case saying that one i want separate directory for my application i really don't want to use the existing uh, directory azure ad directory then you might need to create the uh, <clears throat> new tenant actually uh, my plan is to discuss more about this one groups as well as a lot of uh, uh, security and everything when we go for the azure active directory just i want to give you because you might get a doubt yesterday there was three subscriptions right now i have only one subscription what exactly happened so because i moved it i was testing it it will take some time to replicate because i did it yesterday night and i seen today morning uh, it moved to the it moved to the maverick trainings again i moved it back it will take some time but eventually it will come back actually here it's not displaying it's already came back but it will come eventually okay right so we already have this production subscription with me now next level what you need to do yesterday if you remember what we what i told you under the tenant there will be subscription and under the subscription you are going to create a resource group now there are some misconceptions on the resource group guys let me clear that for you see uh, here if i go to subscriptions let me tell you subscriptions don't belong to any region okay subscriptions don't belong to any region that means you can create resources from any region inside the subscription that is why it's not showing any region check it out guys okay 
that means any region it can be india uh, it, it, it can be us australia japan singapore china doesn't matter you can sim in one subscription you can create uh, resources from any location but under the subscription you can't really create directly a machine or any resource guys the next level abstraction is uh, is resource group actually so under under the subscription you get resource group so under the, inside the resource group you uh, uh, you create the resources but but there is one more one more confusion here let me go to resource group here i'm going to go here i'm going to resource groups now when you create a resource group it will definitely show you the location which is created and the location you can see east us uh, so south central everything right i'm going to create a resource group click on here and i'm going to say like uh, eng azure b01 this is the this is this is the resource group i'm going to create and you can choose which location you want to create here you have all the locations you can create but i, I normally select east us so i'll say review and create and create now it will be created very fast actually because this is nothing to do with the physical guys it's just just a similar to a folder actually okay a resource group is similar to a folder so where you can put the resources inside and it's not a physical boundary it's just a logical boundary yeah so if i refresh it i should get uh, this is one of the bug uh, it will take some time to get reflected into the gui actually so sometimes you need to wait for it i don't know uh, microsoft is already working towards that one okay now you got it so if you see eng azure b01 now the important thing here it is showing it, it here it is showing it is showing east us but let me tell you it is not mandatory if you are creating some some resources right they can be from different regions okay they can be from different regions so don't ever think that because just because resource group here eng azure is showing at east east us you can actually have only resources from one particular location it is not true you can actually what you can do you can actually get you can or create resources from different regions as well so what i want you to understand is uh, the resource group is not a physical boundary it's just a logical to grouping of resources so to prove that for you let's do one thing okay mm let's go to storage accounts and see i'm going to create some multiple storage accounts here yeah so i'm going to add a storage account and the name i'm going to give here is the resource group i'm going to select see whatever the resource you're going to create in azure it should sit in some sort of a resource group that that is that is mandatory now uh, before going to this one earlier right azure is different right if you if you're if you've seen azure like three four years back right it is different during that time it is actually called as asm azure is called service manager and uh, it's not and let me tell you uh, it, it, it's, it's not portal.azure.com guys it's actually some come some like windows azure i think so i think uh, windows azure.com something is there actually it actually go to here actually during that time so let me how how the, the screen also looks very different i'll say uh, Windows Azure. If I go to images, so it it looks like this. It used to look like this. So in the olden days, right? So almost like they have they have discontinued from 2018 Jan, I think so. But if you see, this is how the screen looks like in the in olden days. Actually, during that time, it is actually called as Azure Service Manager. Why I'm actually teaching this one? Why I'm actually telling this one? Because sometimes if you are referring to the documents, always see the date because cloud is very dynamic, guys, and it will keep on changing a lot. Okay, it will keep on changing a lot. So whatever the screen, I I, I can't remember how many times the screen has changed before me. So yesterday's night will be different today it will be different and uh, things will keep on changing so uh, you won't even recognize what happened to this uh, what happened to the part, uh, particular service and how exactly it is changed and uh, it's very confusing so the reason i'm telling is if you are studying something always always see okay for example let me let me tell you uh azure app get uh, gateway and uh, health pro for example okay i want to study something so i'm going to go here 
always always see the date it is most important because if you don't properly see the date and start troubleshooting things right and what will happen you mess up because you really do you are actually reading a old document i'm telling you this because of the experience guys because it happens many times to me many many times to me so that's why from that day if i have a need to troubleshoot something first i'll open of course the I'll, I'll depend on google i'm not saying that but still i'm going to verify okay is it a re at least at least in 2008 or something don't refer some document which is 2014 see again if it is a microsoft documentation no issues guys it, you will get the latest documentation sometimes what will happen we 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 work on third party documentation like some some guy random guy has kept the steps and everything so what will happen you you, you follow those steps so make sure that you are you are actually it is not more than five six years old and um, what will happen you go here and check it out for that one you want to find that option that is why i'm telling okay now after asm right that is where they have come with the new concept which is arm which is azure resource manager azure resource manager guys so and this was been phased out there is no more asm actually now it is only azure resource manager so whenever you see something related a document or something azure service manager uh just remember that one that's an old document and azure service manager is no more okay fine then so come here and i'm going to create a storage account i'm going to say like uh, and you need to give lower cases and uh, and the numbers and alphanumeric uh, but uh, you should not have special characters and should not be more than 23 characters i think so uh yeah 24 characters sorry so i'll say um eng and it should be unique i'm going to explain during storage account i'll say uh, storage 01 okay i'm going to create a storage account which is this is similar to a google drive guys where you put the data okay now i just don't want to create machines it will take a lot of time so what i'll say this here i'm going to select east us for example i'll come here i'll say standard and uh, i'm going to i'm going to leave defaults and i'm going to select ella don't worry about all these things so this yes, I'm going to give networking or let's say review and create and create because I want to show you where exactly this is creating. Now it is actually creating in resource group ENG Azure B01 and this is uh, the resource group is in East US as well as the storage group you are creating that is also in East US. It's nothing, not big deal, right? It's fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more. This time I'm going to add again the same resource group i'm going to come down give it here i'm going to give this to this time it's a, i'm going to say central india which is fine okay so premium and i'm going to say lrs and this one i'll say review and create so this is the manual work guys creating such a way is a manual work but again it's okay uh, only for a few more days later we're going to automate things and next one more and I'll say uh, let's create somewhere around uh, not India okay let's create UK West actually yeah UK West Review and create and create. So what exactly I did actually? I have created three resources in a resource group. These three resources are simple storage accounts. These storage accounts, right? Uh, the point here is they belong to three different regions totally. Okay, they're going to have three different regions. I'm going to come to the regions and availability zones. Don't worry. So if you see. If you go to storage accounts and if you see i have storage account 01 02 they belong to the eng azure 01 east us and central india so what you need to understand is even the resource group belong to east us but the resources inside the resource group can belong to a different region keep that in mind actually but we really don't do that because only like 
enterprise companies will have like environments in different different regions most probably most of the times you actually going to stick to one region only but depends upon the company to company but you should not think that uh, you should not think that resource group is a hard boundary which will not allow to create